This morning, the unequal effects of the coronavirus in Texas. Dallas has twice as many cases as Houston. Texas unemployment up more than 800 percent. And conservatives argue the response is not worth the damage to the economy. This morning, we are exploring every political angle. Side by side with the president, the woman leading the White House Coronavirus Task Force, Dr. Deborah Birx, takes our questions from Washington. When will those relief checks arrive in your mailbox? It's one of the topics we'll discuss with Congressman Mark Vesey from Fort Worth. So you can be very upset about what's going on with businesses, and I am too. And a frustrated county commissioner doing Facebook Live from his front porch. What Dallas's J.J. Koch had to say that left a lot of people talking. Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. And good morning. We begin with Dallas County at the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in Texas. Let's first, though, get you caught up on Texas political news this week. You know, President Trump formally declared a disaster in Texas from the coronavirus. That designation essentially frees up federal money to help fight the disease in our state. Plus, Texas businesses like American Airlines and Southwest here will get billions from that federal relief package that Congress passed separately. Austin will soon get new representation in the Texas Senate. The governor announced that July 14th will be the special election to fill the seat that Kirk Watson is leaving next month. And right now, two candidates here say they are running for it. Travis County Judge Sarah Eckhart and State Rep Eddie Rodriguez. And every vote counts. The Republican runoff for a state house seat just west of Austin is the latest example. Justin Berry, he finished third and therefore got cut out of the runoff, missing it by just one vote. But after all of the mail-in ballots were counted, he ended up barely making the runoff after all by just one vote. And now to the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in Texas. Dallas County has more cases than anywhere else in the state. And those who do not take it seriously, that frustrates our first guest this morning. Dallas County Commissioner J.J. Koch is the only conservative on the commissioner's court in Dallas, and he got so worked up about it the other night that he got on Facebook Live from his front porch, and he shared a piece of his mind with all of his followers. Commissioner Koch joins us right now by Skype. Good morning to you, Commissioner. Morning, Jason. What spurred you to walk out on your front porch and, and get on that Facebook Live? Well, we had just made the difficult decision to go forward with the shelter in place. And I heard from a number of supporters of mine that they intended to not follow that uh, and essentially jeopardize their health and the health of their employees. I thought it critical to share the data uh, that we were looking at uh, that made it clear that if we continued down the path that we were headed, we would be risking lives in a very egregious manner. Let's talk about the number of cases increases every day in Dallas County and over the weekend here is no different. Based on the trajectory we are seeing now, when does the coronavirus pandemic peak in Dallas County? With the shelter in place um, order, we should see a flattening in a week and a half or two weeks. There's still a great deal of folks out there that um, have contracted the virus that have not shown symptoms yet and have not gotten themselves tested. So we can just make a very uh, well-educated guess by extrapolating the numbers we have now that we are going to have some big numbers here uh, within the next two weeks. So does that mean in the does that mean right now that we're looking at least two more weeks of social distancing and two more weeks of being inside our homes? Absolutely. It'll be critical to maintain the social distancing um, even after we get to a point where this thing is stable and we have enough healthcare resources, we're still going to have to maintain a certain degree of social distancing all the way into the fall to make sure that we don't have a reoccurrence or a reflare up of um, you know, this epidemic. And Commissioner, let's say we flatten the curve uh, you know, in the next, next few weeks here. At what point do you see um, some of these restrictions being loosened up in Dallas County? I think it's going to be necessary to determine that we can continue to protect our older population. Uh, that vulnerable population uh, still will need a, a great deal of protection all the way into the fall. There may be instances where some of our younger employees can return to work and will have to work with um, 
are non-essential businesses to make sure that if they do bring folks back into an environment that they're still maintaining that six foot spacing, that they're taking temperatures at the beginning of the day um, to make sure that we you know, just don't continue to put ourselves back in this hole. So you think we have uh, at least two more weeks till we flatten the curve, but potentially a few more weeks after that until some of these restrictions might be re loosened or released? Yes, I think that we don't have uh, the ability to loosen up the majority of the restrictions anywhere near uh, a month. And I think that, you know, we're going to change our behaviors or have to change our behaviors at least into September of uh, this fall if we're not going to get ourselves back in this ditch. On Facebook Live the other night, you, you reiterated your support for Governor Abbott, but you also mentioned that he is leading from behind. The governor is following what the county judges do, do first. Do you think the governor should mandate a statewide lockdown? I think it's time for that. We've seen the spread in the urban and dense counties. Um, they've been all affected by this and they've taken the moves necessary. Uh, it's going to start to creep into our counties that are um, less than 100,000. Uh, they may not have the, the high rates of infection, but you know those are places that are constantly pointed to as having inadequate health resources. So even the smallest spike in the small um, 30,000 person county can be devastating. So I think it's incumbent upon the governor to take the sound medical advice. Uh, there's you know, many of the, the hospital organizations, doctors organizations have been calling upon him to order the statewide um, shelter in place. And I think it's the prudent thing to do at this time. Commissioner, obviously uh, saving lives comes first, but have you seen any projections about what this might cost Dallas County since right now Dallas is the hardest hit in Texas? Yes, this is gonna cost our economy very dearly. Um, I think it, it, it's a reasonable estimate to say that, you know, just within the first couple weeks of shelter in place, it'll cost our local economy at least a billion and a half uh, dollars in um, lost tax revenue, productivity, um, you know, from a number of angles, this is going to damage all of our institutions equally. And we're gonna have to make a very concerted effort to pick all of those institutions up as soon as we are past this thing. But I will say this, um, the economics of this are really simple in that if we were to allow this thing to go wild and free, the economic damage would far surpass uh, any of these restrictive uh, orders. And we have about 30 seconds left, Commissioner, but I want to ask you, going back to the first question, you heard from some of your supporters. There are a lot of conservatives out there who say that, you know what, the damage to the economy is not worth all of this. Briefly, is there a message you would give to them? Um, if you're making that argument and you're a Christian, you need to pray about it and go back to the Bible. Because I don't think that any 30 pieces of silver are worth uh, the life of our beloved uh, countrymen. Not only that, um, I think it's pretty clear that the government that can't protect life will not be in business for very long. So if, if you want to keep that social order and keep the good things that we have here in Texas and here in the United States, it's time to properly care for our fellow men and then work together to get our economy back running when the time is appropriate. All right. That's Dallas County Commissioner J.J. Koch. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. And now to the toll that the coronavirus is taking on the Texas economy. Unemployment filings are up 800 percent. The Texas Workforce Commission is hiring 100 extra employees to handle the deluge of requests. And in Houston, an economics expert at U of H said the state's largest city there, it could lose 300,000 jobs alone. Ross Ramsey is back with us this morning. It seems, Ross, the last time we talked to you, the world was a different place. Of course, Ross is the co-founder and executive editor of the Texas Tribune. Good morning, man. Good morning. Good to see you. It was quite a different place a couple, it, of, months, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, indeed it was. Um, these claims jumped 800% in a week from 16,000 right. to 155,000. A lot of questions here, but what kind of state responses might be under discussion to help these Texans? Well, you know, the first response is unemployment insurance, which is kicking in now. People are applying for it. As you said, they've, they're trying to beef that up. This is to be expected if you say in, that you want to close the restaurants and you want to close any business that gathers more than 10 people. You know, the, all those people employed, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of employees. And, you know, we're seeing that in the numbers now. I think these numbers are going to get worse 
before they get better. And we're also seeing coronavirus cases in the Texas prison system and in some county right. jails. These are dense populations, a lot of people around uh, each other. How are these worked out while we still maintain law and order? Well, you know, they're, uh, they've stopped transfers. They're, they're not moving prisoners from one place to another. Dallas County has an outbreak. Um, my understanding is that the Texas prison system isn't taking Dallas County criminals at, at the moment. Uh, some of the prisons don't have any COVID cases yet at all. I was talking to the Anderson County judge uh, uh, earlier in the week, and he said they have five prisons, no cases yet. So it's not everywhere. They're trying to limit it where it is. All right, Ross, back to you in a moment. Thank you. Coming up, New York is a hot zone for the coronavirus, but should air travel be restricted to and from there to prevent exposure to Texas? We'll go to Washington and ask the woman leading the White House Coronavirus Task Force. And how soon will those relief checks come from the federal government? That's one of the topics that Congressman Mark Vesey and I discussed. His interview is straight ahead. You're watching Inside Texas Politics. This program is just not long enough to ask all the questions we have. So we started a political podcast called Yolitics, and with all that's going on, we're dropping two episodes a week. Our last two, though, had interviews with a Texan recovering from COVID-19 and a Texas nurse who has been around the world treating infectious diseases. She had some things to say about the public health response in Texas to this one. You can search for Yolitics or WFAA wherever you get your podcast or pause this program here and scan the QR code on your screen to take you directly to the last episode. You know, every time the president speaks about the coronavirus, our next guest is often up next to the microphone. Dr. Deborah Burks is a former colonel in the military. She worked at the Centers for Disease Control and is now leading the White House Coronavirus Task Force. So the White House called to see if we would like to interview her here in Texas, and we had some questions. They are many of the same ones you've been asking as well. Burks, thank you for the time. Let's start with the big question everyone has. How long is it going to take to get enough tests to physically test everyone who wants to get tested? You know, that's a great question. So as you know, um, we have had to convert all of our testing into these high throughput commercial platforms. Um, and I think that was really at the president's guidance, a real breakthrough to be able to test literally tens of thousands of people a day. Um, we're running about 60 to 70 thousand tests a day now. Um, if you remember, we were previously at about 500 to 1,000 tests a day. We understood the need and we've been working very hard to ensure that those commercial platforms are available. Currently, we have prioritized the test for the hospitals that really need early diagnosis of their patients. And so if you've done drive-throughs, um, you, you may be a delayed in getting your results. You said that anyone who leaves New York City should be quarantined for at least 14 days, but major airlines still fly in and out of New York City and fly back to major hubs like Dallas, Fort Worth, and like Houston's Intercontinental. Uh, do you think the passenger service to New York City should be canceled until this is over like it was to China and to Europe? I think every American is taking responsibility and understands that if they have been in an area where there's more transmission, you need to monitor yourself as well as protect others. And that was what that message was about. We know that people who transit through New York come in to deliver goods, or come in for very specific time limited means and, and reasons that that is really we're not doing any saying any guidance about restricting that activity. Some states have enacted a statewide lockdown. I think the number is up to 21 as we record this right now. Texas has not instead here in this state. They're handling it on a county by county basis. Should Texas reconsider that? So that's a really excellent question. I will tell you that is what we're looking at now at the direction of the president. We're looking at this in a state by state, county by county basis. And what do I mean by that? We're looking at the, the absolute number of cases. We're looking at the growth rate of new cases. And Texas is a big state. So Texas would have a great variability across the state. Where you often get into trouble are metro areas where people have been closer together or potentially through public transport and public transit systems because we know the virus lives on 
metal and hard surfaces, people could have gotten incidentally exposed and there's much more transmission in what we believe in these highly urban areas. So the governor should be looking at their data every day that's coming in from all, you have amazing hospitals and scientists all across Texas. I've met many of them, they're brilliant. And I think you have testing available and using that successfully to be laser focused on what you need to do in each of the counties. Dr. Burks, I want to ask you one last question. What kind of projections have you seen as far as when COVID-19 might peak in the United States? What would that look like? When might that come? But we're encouraged by the curves of China, South Korea, and now some early evidence from Italy that they may in Italy themselves be able, with their strong mitigation efforts, to be able to see a change. But understand, it takes about two to three weeks to see the impact of your mitigation efforts because with cases that you see that come to the hospital, they were exposed probably two weeks or more ago. So that's why we're tracking this very carefully, both at the testing level and hospital mission level. All right, Dr. Burks, thanks for the time and stay healthy and good luck to you. Thank you. That $2 trillion relief package is likely just the beginning of what Congress will have to do to prop up the economy in the wake of the coronavirus. Congressman Mark Vesey is a Democrat from Fort Worth and told me on Skype that the next wave of relief really needs to focus on small businesses. In fact, he just introduced a bill to help those businesses cut through red tape and win federal contracts. How many small businesses do you think in North Texas or maybe in just your district would this affect? Oh my God, it, it, countless, uh, countless numbers. And you have to think that the majority of businesses in Texas are small businesses. Uh, there are people that employ under 500 people. There are people that employ under 100 people. That, that's what makes up the bulk of the Texas economy. How soon do you think there might be relief, physically checks in the mail, to Texans who need them right now? Uh, we're trying to get that done ASAP. I mean, that's our number one focus and priority. I mean, that's one of the reasons why this bill is having a hard time uh, getting out. We want to make sure that people can start getting checks ASAP. We know that there's- Is that the next, the next week or so you think, Congressman, or what? Uh, hopefully, I mean, it, I, I don't know uh, uh, when exactly. I hate to put a timetable on it, uh, but again, the hope is that we can get, get it out, as, uh, get them the checks as soon as they need them, because we know that people uh, are going to start needing the money uh, soon. Uh, it's not going to, it, you know, people aren't going to be able to wait uh, much longer. Is there any mechanism for the federal government to postpone rent relief for 60 days, 90 days to tell the banks, you know, we're going to, we're putting, the economy's frozen, so you guys are going to be frozen as well too. It wouldn't delete these payments, just push them back. Uh, to right. begin. Is that something you'd support? And is there a mechanism to physically do that? I, I think that the I think that the governor can already do that. I think that the state could already uh, suspend rent payments. Uh, uh, if you wanted to, you could uh, suspend payments for people that have already have been that have that are unemployed that have already lost their jobs. So I think that's something that we could already uh, be doing. And I would certainly support that. I think it's going to have to be done. Congressman V.C. and I both working from home this weekend there. The impact of the coronavirus is going to be far worse on the economic side than the health impact will be. And a growing number of conservative Republicans say it's just not worth shutting down the economy for. That's one of our topics next on The Roundtable. This is Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley. Time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. Ross is back. Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram is joining us from Fort Worth this morning. And, of course, Bernadine Steptoe is a political producer at WFAA in Dallas. And, Bud, we're starting with you uh, this morning. Dallas-Fort Worth has twice as many cases as Houston does. What do you make of that? What did Houston do that DFW did not do? Almost three times as many now, Jason. And, you know, Houston was so much more organized sooner. They had a plan. They had a communications effort. And they had one source for all the communication. They were a week ahead of us on putting the word out. They started testing first responders, then seniors. They were more organized a week ahead of DFW from the get-go. A lot of that is the fact that Houston's used to crises. Everybody listens to press conferences in Houston. And of course, Ross, you know, Houston does have hurricanes and all kinds of uh, flooding right. events down there as well, too. But this just shows kind of what we're talking to Commissioner J.J. Koch about earlier in the program. There's a patchwork going on around here of responses. And the governor, is he leading from behind like some conservatives say he is? 
Well, you know, I think part of this is that the, there's a patchwork in the way that the coronavirus is hitting Texas. It's, you know, hitting some areas faster than others. The governor has been slow to declare statewide standards. You know, there have been a lot of communities around Houston, Dallas, some others that have been relatively aggressive about how to deal with this. And there have been a lot of communities, smaller communities, littler towns, rural areas that have been slow to react. And the governor's sort of been paused and caught betwixt and between. Yeah, and one of the things that the state government officials are telling me, I'm sure you guys as well, too, is that they don't want to shut down the stores and restaurants in a county that doesn't have any cases right now, any confirmed cases if they don't have to. But who knows what's going to happen in the coming days? Bernadine, bringing up what uh, Bud said, does this mean that, that there needs to be more of a regional approach, a regional government to make these hard decisions during crises like this? I think so, so that there won't be so many uh, patchwork situations going on because if if you listen to what uh, the White House is saying that it could get could it could spread and so we need some type of uh, continuity somewhere but also it also shows particularly in in the instance that you talked about earlier how important testing is and how important getting starting it earlier and uh, jumping on it. But Dan Patrick drew a lot of flack for his comments, saying essentially suggesting that seniors should sacrifice themselves. But since then, there have been a lot of other conservatives saying that the, the response is overblown. How's that going to play out? You know, it's beginning to fracture the, the unified stance on this. You know, some Republicans still say we have to follow the doctors, listen to medicine, do what the doctors say. But some Republicans are starting to say, you know, is it worth the cost? And, you know, the, uh, the discussion is... One that's been going on for a while, it started to break through. Dan Patrick brought it into the headline. Did it surprise you at all to hear, Ross? No, I think, you know, you compare this a little bit to a storm response. You know, when people are telling you there's a storm coming, a lot of people are kind of wait and see. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And when the storm gets there, they start to batten down the hatches. You're seeing this in local levels. The, the county judge in Montgomery County, for example, said that the county wasn't going to do any further restrictions. Three days later, they did more restrictions because they got some cases. You know, I think as the disease arrives, yeah. the response arrives. All right, good deal, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. And thank you for watching as well. We'll be back next Sunday with another episode of Inside Texas Politics. Hope you have a good day and stay healthy, everyone.